it's that time again. Time for a brand new What's Up. Today, hot topics are getting heated when the co-hosts discuss the latest on the NFL scandals in domestic violence and child abuse. And then, Austin's Vine has gone viral and his friend Connor Pack is here to talk about their instant rise to fame. Then the co-hosts are introducing you to their brand new segment producer, Megan, and she's got some food for them to try. All that and much more coming up on What's Up. And welcome everyone. What's up guys? We are What's back. Up, yeah. Episode 2. I missed you all last week. I, I did, did not miss you. I'm, oh. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well. <laughs> I'm just getting ready for these hot topics. Uh, they're hot. They hot. This yeah. is, uh, you know, the NFL has been making headlines for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's not even about the games or bad calls or something. It's about child abuse and domestic violence. And it all started when TMZ Sports released a video of now former Baltimore Ravens player Ray Rice beating his then fiance and now wife Janae Palmer in an elevator, knocking her out cold and dragging her off the elevator. Rice was originally suspended for the first two games when all this happened, but then TMZ released the video and now he has been dropped by the team. Uh, then just last week, Minnesota Vikings player Adrian Peterson was indicted on charges of reckless or negligent injury to his four-year-old boy. According to photos released by TMZ, um, they show his son's legs um, with um, slash-like wounds on them, like four inches long. Uh, the prosecution also alleges that Peterson would repeatedly beat his son with a tree branch on his back, ankles, legs, and other areas. Um, you know, with these scandals surfacing, now the conversation of domestic violence and child abuse are extremely high, and everybody's talking about them on all the shows. Um, everybody's got an opinion about it, so what's yours? <laughs> well, I think it's okay to whip your child or spank your child, as some people yeah. say, because that's what's wrong with kids in today's world, is that their parents don't spank them, so they're bad. <laughs> and my mom used to beat me all the time. She would beat me with switch, belt, her hand. So oh. I turned Cindy out just fine. was a problem fine. child. Yeah. <laughs> no, not, not like my brother, though, so I turned out just fine. But um, there is um, a limit. So what is that child. line? Where where is we'll we'll start with child abuse, abuse, then we'll move to domestic violence. Where is that line between spanking and then there's child abuse? I think it's different for every person. It's different for every family, and you need to find out what's the best way to discipline your child. Because I know in some circumstances, it's not necessary. Some children can get the message and be good. Because I don't think that's the only thing wrong with kids. To be honest, I think there's a lot of stuff wrong with kids. It's not just the fact that they're not <laughs> getting spanked. There's a lot of stuff that can be wrong with kids. But I do uh, think. Uh, that some kids, talking to work, some kids it doesn't work. And you need to know what's best for your own child as a parent. And what mm -hmm. a shame this is that it has to escalate to this because, oh my gosh, you, you poor kids. Kids yeah. need to be disciplined. But exactly. And, and I, I think he pushed it too far. Oh, I, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I mean, when I was growing up, uh, my mouth gets me in trouble a lot. I yeah, don't know if you'll notice me this. Too. It still does to this day. <laughs> um, but, you know, my dad, and. You know, I've never really talked about this. My dad is no longer with us. He, he passed when I was 13. Um, he spanked me when I did something wrong. And looking back, he always said, you don't know how much this hurts me, like emotionally. Mm -hmm. right. And I, he said, you will one day. And now seeing all this and stuff, I do understand because I, I have come out better. I don't run my mouth as often. He's doing it to right. teach you a yeah, lesson. Right. And, and, you know, it, I and wish it I could say you. to him, That's you know, what yeah, you're right, mm -hmm. Dad. But I, I just think that some people see spanking and they consider that child abuse because they're, it's hitting your child and speaking. And I, I just think that that's not, that's not the case. I, to me, I see child abuse as clocking your son, doing what Adrian Peterson yeah. right. has done. With that is child branch. abuse. Yeah. And, and, we, and the fact that it goes from child abuse to spousal abuse or yeah. whatever the case is here, yeah. fiance abuse. There's one thing in disciplining your child, you know, teaching them a lesson. There's another thing in knocking someone out cold in an elevator mm -hmm. and dragging their lifeless body out. And only when the video is released do you get actually in real trouble for it. Yeah, I actually want to read a comment from a viewer that we got on this whole situation that she feels that it's a, uh, eight, at hclay14 on Instagram says, it is 100% fair that Adrian Johnson was suspended from the Minnesota Vikings. Too often, mm -hmm. professional athletes and celebrities are overlooked by the law and can get away with just about anything else. Child abuse or any abuse for that matter should not be tolerated 
by the NFL. Those athletes are supposed to be role models for young people everywhere. That's another thing, you know, role models, and everybody looks at these NBA players, NFL players who are, or celebrities like Justin Bieber, who's on Caroline's shirt, you know, they see these people and they see them doing wrong, and they think, oh, it's okay because they're doing it, so I can too. Right. And no, you can't beat your fiance or your right, child. Right. You can't. And it just. But do you know that the fiance married him? They're exactly. married. They have a child together. And then you know what? That is her fault. Yeah. And and, oh, and yeah. I but know. I, no, no, no. Let me say. I completely understand domestic violence situations. I, I will, I've never been in one, but I understand that those are really difficult situations and it's hard to leave, and I understand that. But you were engaged, and then after this happened, you got married. You still married. got married. Right. You still got yeah. married to him. That there's a line there. Make, make, for so your child, you, make a decision for your child to get away from your abuser. Mm -hmm. Yes? But what if this was just a, and I'm not condoning what he's done at all. Right. But let me get that out there. But, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, maybe this was just a, a, the first time this has ever happened. I do not believe that. So. I do not. Okay. I do not believe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that someone can lash out and, and you expect it to never happen again. I'm sorry, but if I'm with someone and they hit me, I, there's no trust anymore. Oh, it's game There over. is no more, yeah, <laughs> it's there is no more trust. <laughs> and if there's no trust, then there's no love. And that's what I think. Like, I can't trust you not to hit me. That, that's ridiculous. That's the one piece of respect that I deserve is not to be physically oh, I beaten. Understand. And I don't believe that the NFL handled, like, handled it properly because they originally have. he was suspended. Roger Goodell suspended him two, two games. games. And then they saw the video. And yeah. then they suspended him Indefinitely. Yeah. Right. Because, what does the video were, publicity? It was people were saying, you know, I don't know. No, this that. isn't a good enough punishment. Yeah. Was, and now I they guess they should have punished him originally. They should have suspended him. But yeah. some people are saying they don't think season. the NFL should have punished him at all. They think that career should be set aside and that only the court system should be punished. But then, but the, punished. when you do that, then everybody's like, okay, they're associating this team with exactly. beating, and then all, they're losing sponsorships. I do think I feel like. If you if you can't do the crime if you can't do the time yeah. don't do the crime and he's done horrible crime right um, he has. and you know our hearts go out to everybody who is in a situation like this and if you are you know seek help get you know there is a way out of it um, but unfortunately we could have this conversation for another 20 minutes mm -hmm. but we can't we'll be right back with even more hot topics Thank you. it never gets old huh nope. It kind of makes you want to... Break into song? Yup. I love the sunset. I love Eagle Lake. I love the forest. I love when eagles play. I love the campus! And all its sights and sounds. boom dee yada boom dee yada boom dee yada boom dee yada I love philosophy. We love diversity. I love English. And all its weird words. I love the music. And all its melodies. Boom de yada, boom de yada. Boom de yada, boom de yada. I love fraternities. I love sororities. I love to draw things. And all the athletes. I love more heads. It's such a pretty place. Boom de yada, 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 boom de yada. Welcome back to What's Up. We're trying to have some laughs. I mean, this is a, this is a deep show we're having yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm trying to lighten the mood a little. Yeah, bit. We're, uh, it's working. It, yeah, it is. But uh, <laughs> fortunately, we're getting right back into it. School systems in Greenup County, Kentucky, were closed last Wednesday when a fake Facebook account surfaced um, with a threatening post saying, "Quote: I'm quoting this. I'm back at Greenup for a few days, but my brother is actually going to bomb Greenup schools or a shootout." But either way, them schools are going to be a lot of injuries tomorrow. Better be prepared. School officials for Greenup County, Raceland Worthington, and Russell Independent Schools decided as a precaution to close schools for the day to allow the police to investigate and search all the schools for any explosive devices. Um, no devices were found, but an arrest was made on an 11-year-old little girl. Gosh. Caroline, your mom works for the Russell Independent Schools. My mom works for Russell. I graduated from yeah. Russell. My sister graduated from Russell. Um, it, first of all, Russell is one of three school systems in Greenup County. There's Russell, Raceland, and Greenup, Greenup, County. Uh, Greenup County Schools. Um, I get the news that 
all schools in the county, in my county back home, are shut down the next day because someone's made a bomb threat at our school and they're taking it very seriously and trying to... As they should. Right, yeah. of course, mm -hmm. and trying to trace this fake Facebook account to the source and make an arrest. But who would have ever suspected an 11-year-old girl? The girl was a student at Greenup County yeah. and the Greenup County schools. And in the sixth grade, like you she think was, uh, in the so sixth sad. grade, I was in band and I was, you know, watching cartoons. Yeah, exactly. watching Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Still I was playing not with Barbie worried. Dolls and stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I I was not worried about making bomb threats, school threats, things like that. This is really scary. And this yeah. this to me this goes back to what we were talking about the last segment with I'm not saying she but she needs a spanking first of all. Oh. And <laughs> and it, I think parents, where are the parents in all of this? Exactly. Right. Where know, are the parents? Why are this girl's parents, why didn't they teach them right from wrong from the beginning. And then, of course, we don't know. This could be a horrible home situation. Right. Anything, I, and I'm not trying to give her reasons for why she did this, but right. uh, I just... It's awful. And right now, I know, I only know this because it's where I came from, but they're trying to see if they want to try her as a child or as an adult because the threat was so serious. Well, do you think she even knew what she was doing? Obviously. Let's see. What did she, she say? She said... Uh, going to bomb green up schools or a shootout, but either way, them schools are going to be a lot of injuries tomorrow. Better be prepared. I don't want to assume yeah. anything, but something like that, you have to know what you're doing, regardless yeah. of how old you are. I mean, <laughs> I know, 11, but I just I think uh, my sister's 12, and you know, we've had my mom has had the conversation with her when she let her have an Instagram account. You know, it's on private. Right. Mom has to approve of people that follow her. If you know, it's not exactly. a close friend of hers. If um, she has to ask my mom, you know, what can I post this picture? And, exactly. And, and that's the thing you have to. It's called netiquette. Mm -hmm. You have to teach kids how to be responsible yeah. on social media. And this girl went through the hassle of making. It's not only her own Facebook. It's an entirely new Facebook. It's a fake Facebook account. Yeah. Not only did she do that, but this fake Facebook had other fake Facebook account friends that mm -hmm. were friends with. And this it person. also she used the picture. Of somebody else, I, I don't. On Google I mean, Images, it, it, was it was a just, Google Images, and that's photo. another thing. You could, I mean, these computer systems now with FBI and CIA. I, I mean, I don't know if they're real. It happens on Scandal and Criminal right. Minds. <laughs> they facial recognition, and they could have easily just gone through. Oh, that's this person, and arrested him, and right. he, his life could right. have been ruined could have been because ruined. of this little girl. And now. My fear is, because this is where I come from, that some kid's going to say, oh, school gets canceled if I make a bomb threat. So, like, does that mean that other kids are going to start making bomb threats just because school gets let out for a day? Like, that's awful. And this is something we really need to be worried about. Yes. Because nothing happened like this when I was in school. Like, we, no, this was really we scary. We did drills. We had drills for drills. the situation. Mm -hmm. But I've never been in a situation at school where my life was in danger. Mm -hmm. I think you're, yeah. you're supposed to go to school and you feel safe. Oh, right. and I will say on that note also, this is information that has not been released on the news, but I know this. Um, exclusive breaking exclusive news Exclusive breaking news <laughs> information, I'll tell you guys. A note was found in Greenup County Middle School bathroom, a note, that, a handwritten note by a, a student assumed, allegedly. allegedly, that it said, that was only the beginning, be prepared for next time. <laughs> wow. Um, Don't it, it know just, if some student just wrote that, but I'm just saying. Trying to be funny. Yeah, it's not funny. It's not, it's not funny. It's really scary. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this I has also happened at Sheldon Clark High School in, uh, I believe it's in Martin County, Kentucky. Uh, the school went to lockdown last week after a bullet was found in the bathroom. I mean, it, it just, it's sad. You know, I think of my sister. She's in middle school, and, and I'm in college. I mean, we've had so many shootings recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it just makes me worry. Yeah. You know, do I feel safe walking? to my car after leaving here at night or something. Right. So. See, my parents monitored every single thing that I did when I was little. I, I didn't even have Facebook until mm -hmm. I was in high school. Yeah. And it's just crazy to imagine what happened there. We don't know. I don't, we don't, don't want to assume anything, but what happened there? Why weren't they? I don't know. See, and I had like Bebo and all that stuff growing up, but it goes back to my mom spanking me and I exactly. was disciplined and yeah. I you knew, knew right, right from, from wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Exactly. Well, again, you know, as more stuff comes available for this, this story will also follow up a bit. And we're going to follow up with some lighter things that are coming up uh, later in the show. So stick around. So we'll be right back. Yo, why are you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in your room and boom, chicks. That's what I'm talking about!
welcome back to What's Up. Today on the show, we have Mr. Blaine Roberts, who is a part of the Amelia Earhart cast and crew down in the theater. So welcome, Blaine. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. So tell us about the Little Company show this year. What's going on? Well, this year we're doing Amelia Earhart, and it's a show about Amelia Earhart told through the perspective of a modern-day reporter that goes back in time and gives you a little bit more of an inside scoop on how Amelia lived her life and maybe some of the, the minute details that aren't really taught in history class, some of the things that are kind of overlooked, some of the things that make her more human. Like a lot of people today, they see Amelia Earhart as this hero, this, you know, this bigger-than-life person, and she was. She was a hero by all means. But one of the things that we forget is that she was just a human being like everyone else. And part of the show is that it reminds people that she is just like everyone else. And she was somebody who came from pretty humble beginnings but was able to come through that way into a higher position in life and somebody who people could look to. And she was America. She was somebody who epitomized what America meant to people in the early 1900s, and especially during the 1930s. That's fabulous. Yes. So tell us about the script or like what – how like how did you, do you know how they pick the script? Do you know like what it means to you? Have you had any difficulties? Well, part of part of the fun of my specific part, I'm the narrator, and the way the narrator is that the set up. Then? Yes, I'm okay. sorry, the reporter. Yes, uh, part of the fun with that is that there isn't really a specific way to play that part. You don't have to be Amelia, or you don't have to be her husband GP, or George Putnam, who is the other opposite character in the show. There are only okay. three characters in the show. Oh wow! Well, there are only three actors in the show. They take place and they play Got some it. other different characters, but there are only three actors. Three people the on show. stage at a yes, time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, part of the fun with that is that the narrator, the reporter, doesn't have to play a specific person. So you're allowed to make yourself part of that too. You get to be part of the show, yeah. your own self. And so I think that that's you know awesome. It's one of the only parts I've ever played that I've been able to do that. I've been able to be Blaine and the narrator and the reporter and you know all these other things at the same time and be able to include myself. Sure. That sounds fabulous. So, correct me if I'm wrong, Little Company does a show here in our theater yeah. downstairs. We do a main stage show here okay. at um, the Little Theater, and then in the spring we start to tour. Uh, we actually have to stay a little bit later on Christmas break to do like a little run through. It's, I think, I think uh, Octavia calls it boot camp, and yeah. it's, it's to learn about like working with children and things like that, so that way we're prepared for you know, questions they'll throw at us. You know, sure. part, of, part of the fun of Little Company is that we're learning children's theater. We're learning how to work with kids and how to answer questions. And part of, part of our extensive rehearsal time was learning about how to work workshops and how to answer those kinds of questions that they might throw at us. Like, what is Amelia Earhart about? You know, who was Amelia Earhart? And things like that. That, we, that way we're not stuck, you know, cold silence. We have things that we can say, things that we can teach the kids, because it's educational. We're supposed to be teaching them. That sounds way. great. Yeah. OK, so can you tell us the dates before we head out? I sure can. Uh, um, little company dates are September 30th through October 5th. Starts at 7:30 and doors open at 7. Okay, so that's downstairs in the theater. In the that's not theater. the tour. The yes, tour will happen in the spring. The tour will happen in the spring. Well, we want to thank you, Blaine, right. for being on the show. Thank I appreciate you. you coming on. Go see Amelia Earhart down in the theater September 30th through October 5th at 7:30. Get your tickets at the MSU box office uh, in person or call. We'll be right back with Austin Burke and a special Vine segment he's got going on. So stay tuned. Welcome back to What's Up. You know, if you're a fan of the show and you watch it frequently, you know Austin is a little addicted to making vines. But, but a, with what, 104,000 followers? 104,000. Yeah. But recently he posted a vine of his that has not only gone viral, but is now airing on national television. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It all started when Austin filmed his friend Connor, seen right here, <laughs> uh, during. <laughs> The dunking contest at Rock the Wreck this past welcome weekend oh, yeah. earlier this semester. Uh, the video shows Connor going up for the dunk, but instead of making the dunk, he face plants. Face plants hard. So, <laughs> joining me to discuss their instant <laughs> rise to fame and all, on all the sports blogs is Austin and his friend Connor. Guys, <laughs> thank you, I guess, for being I'm kind of <laughs> nervous about this interview. Don't be nervous. Um, okay, so the first question that everybody's asking this was this staged? I've seen so many people ask that. Staged. Like, Connor, was this staged? No. <laughs> no. no. 
This guy was... You mean was, you willingly didn't face... Like, this guy no. was red on the side of his head for almost two days. I mean, his head smacked off so the ground. you were seriously hurting this? Mm, not really, but it did hurt a lot. It, 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 hurt. it hurt him. I've I was ready to take him to the hospital. Oh, really? I was ready that's, because that's the way friend. his head bounced, I was... Of course, after I finished recording the video, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to take him to the hospital because it just looked like it hurt really bad. So, now, Austin... You f originally you posted this on your Instagram. I did. And what? Why did you decide to put it on Vine? Just at first, I didn't want to put it on Vine because I knew it would get a lot of attention, and I didn't know if it was okay <laughs> with Connor. But Connor's he's loving it right now. Oh, uh, yeah. But I put it on my Instagram; it got a lot of attention. So I'm like, okay, I can put this on Vine, and maybe you know a lot of people will see it. And maybe something will happen. Yeah. Never expecting, never expecting what what actually happened to to happen to the video. So. I mean, you all are airing on Sports Center. You were in all, you did an interview with all KYHoops.com. <laughs> what do y'all think of this instant rise to fame over Connor having zero <laughs> basketball skills? Well, I mean, I'm wow. enjoying it. I don't think Connor. <laughs> wow, I'm enjoying it. I like it. He loves it. I love it. I think it's great. I mean, the first article I saw was Bleacher Report on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then after that, Huffington Post contacted Connor. I started seeing all these oh, Twitter wow. pages. Uh, got an email from MLB, MLB Network Baseball. I don't know <laughs> why they got it. They emailed me, and then I okay. saw Sports Center got a hold of it, and the Dan Labatard Show and Sports Nation both aired it and uh, laughed at it like we did. Oh, guys, thank you. <laughs> I guess congratulations on all this, uh, Connor. Thanks for coming by and no, talking to you. us. You can actually see the video. We've got it on our Instagram page at what's up underscore MSU. So make it, go watch it, like it, <laughs> enjoy the You'll laugh. pain like we all have. It's funny. <laughs> we'll be right back with more. But first, this is what's up on MSU TV channel Thank you. Bye, Mom. Welcome back to What's Up. Joining us in the studio is a new face to the cast. She is our segment producer, Megan. She's going to be appearing from time to time with us to do some fun crafts, food, anything and everything. So, Megan, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks. So, so we're, we're glad to have you. Tell us, first, let's start with this egg dish. What is this? Okay, um, our first dish that we're going to try today is called omelet in a mug. Okay. Um, it consists of eggs, milk, cheese, and ham. It's really simple to do. Um, all you do is you take your normal coffee mug, oh. and then you take an egg, crack an egg open on the side of the coffee mug or on the side of the table, whichever you prefer. Break it open into the cup, pour some milk in, beat the egg like you would normal scrambled mm. eggs, mm. and then you put oh, ham good. and cheese, stick it in the microwave for two minutes, yeah. take it out, stir it up a little bit, put it on your plate, and you're all done. So do you make this a lot? Like um, I make it quite frequently. Like this is my normal everyday breakfast go-to. It's pretty healthy, yeah. and yeah. Um, it saves you from having to buy like lots and lots of milk because it just requires know. a little cereal, bit. And cereal, cereal gets old after a while. Like yeah, and it's hard to eat it. Like if you're running like for class, this is something you can yeah, like you said throw in the mug. Do people, <laughs> <laughs> do people like yep. give you? Weird looks when you're eating eggs out of a coffee mug? I mean, I've never experienced, you know, somebody <laughs> looking at me strange. The guy this morning in my my film history through film class um, asked me if he could, if next time when I brought uh, myself some eggs, that I bring him some too. But yeah. I mean, this is really good. Really Share good the wealth, again. right? It is because good. I was usually, shocked. Yeah. Like, I don't well, eat breakfast usually because right. I don't want. To have like cold something because that just sounds really unappetizing in the morning. Yes, but if definitely. I something like this. Okay, so, to you. so what's next? I and see. Everybody has a microwave, so it makes yeah. it. Makes I see it a taco good. shell and peanut butter. <laughs> and jelly. Scrumptious. Oh, and jelly. <laughs> and what's Rice it? Krispies. <gasps> what? Okay. This means we're gonna have to do it ourselves. So we what's have to do it ourselves. Yep. 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 So we're gonna we're gonna oh. go through an adventure. So okay. the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open your peanut butter. Hey, <laughs> 
And then you have a knife. Everybody has a butter knife, a plastic oh, yeah. one, so they don't hurt themselves, guys. Good. <laughs> and then you're going to take some peanut butter, however much you like, okay. and you're, with your knife, okay. and spread it on your tortilla shell. <laughs> Where'd you learn this recipe? Um, I actually... I babysat over the summer my between my God. sophomore and junior year, and we got creative in the kitchen because the kids decided that they didn't want normal peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing that I could find was a tortilla shell and Rice Krispies. So. So there you go. That's how we got this. This. It's a pretty cool way of coming up with something concoction like this. Concoction that's yeah. called peanut butter and jelly crunch wrap. Hey. Okay. So okay. after you spread your peanut butter, you're going to grab some Rice Krispies. I'm so proud. Sydney and, and I are so proud of ourselves. We spread peanut butter. Sprinkle <laughs> it on your crunch wrap on top of your peanut butter. Right. We have to wait our turn. Yeah. yeah. We're not yeah. vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> okay. As soon as you lose. Pretty good. Well, I might just have to I'm gonna go ahead. Okay. eat it like this. There you go. <laughs> have okay. some Rice Krispies, guys. Alrighty then. Austin, I forgot your cheese. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Austin wanted cheese with his. Does everybody, yeah. does everybody have Rice Krispies? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good job. Okay, and then. Carol, I just dumped it all on there. <laughs> because I'm a good one. I like it. <laughs> hey, you guys have some more. Thank oh, you. Oh, guys. No. Spare me some Rice Krispies. Here, I'll get it for you. Yes, the have jelly is more? not opening. Oh, well, the next step is you take either your squeezy jelly or your spread on jelly, whichever you prefer. And since I don't have... Well, yeah, what's that prefer? Squeezy jelly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what's that prefer? Squeezy jelly. So... Now yeah, poke that big old pin. <laughs> there you go. Your witchy finger okay. is not working. Well, yeah. well, Chad's trying hey. to get this open. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's so I'm assuming good. that's what you do. Yo, yeah, just so squeeze inventive. it. Oh. I mean, whatever this works. Is, this is going to work. I'm going to put so much Okay. And doing. then roll it up like you would like a, a taco, you know? Ooh. Okay. Just roll it. A taco? A taco. I hope everybody's okay with grape jelly. I'm okay with tacos. Oh, yeah. Grape so jelly is the only jelly. It is the only jelly. jelly. Well, while we all are going to indulge in all this, we want to thank Megan so much uh, for stopping by and doing all this. Try this out yourself. Let us know what you think of them all. Caroline's going to town. <laughs> <laughs> she got we'll, lots of ice cream. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Bye. What's up? Our final minutes together. We want to tell you something. We have a new giveaway method. Um, throughout the week on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, we will be posting little snippets of the hot topics that we're planning for the next for the upcoming show. You, all you have to do is read about the hot topic. We'll have some information for you. Comment on it. Say what you think of the situation. Like we read one today, and if we read your comment on the air you will be sent some free Moorhead swag, for a call courtesy oh. of the Moorhead State University Bookstore. So we thank them for that. Yeah. Also, real quick, I want to mention something that I did this weekend. Um, I was up in Cincinnati at WLWT Studios, the NBC affiliate up there. And I just, I mean, I want to say thank you, first of all, to Todd Dykes and the rest of his morning news team. I mean, it was such a great experience to see how a television show and the news works. It was a yeah. 4.30 a.m. wake-up call, first of all. Worth it. So worth it, it was totally worth it just to see how everything goes. And so if you're ever in the Cincinnati area, make sure you watch them. Good for you, um, Chad. That's so cool. It, it That's was awesome. Yeah. an amazing experience. And, like, it taught me this is what I want to do. I mm -hmm. know that this is what I'm supposed to do with life. And we actually – there's some pictures that I posted on the What's Up Instagram, at What's Up underscore MSU. Speaking of the Instagram, make sure you follow that. And our Twitter, they're both the same thing. There's no apostrophe in the what's, though, because I don't know why. Uh, remember, 100 followers, giveaway time. Facebook.com slash what's up MSU. 150 likes, giveaway time. And also on Vine, Austin has made some Vines from today that we'll be posting on there shortly. From it just means you have to go follow it. You have now. to yeah. go follow it. I mean, we won't even to. tell you what they are. They're mm -hmm. a surprise. You just have to go Exactly. Forward. And you can't watch them until you follow them. I mean, you kind of can't. Good call. You shouldn't. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> we want to thank you all for watching. If Anytime you have a hot topic segment idea or you got something, let us know. If we do your segment you suggest, we'll give you a waste. We'll give you something. 
So until then, until next time when we'll be back, all kinds of fun's going to happen. But until then, always stop to listen to What's Up? Bye, guys. To learn more about What's Up, go to msutv.net.